working his way to the ring. The insurance salesman out of West Virginia, nicknamed The Beast. 21, 11, and 1 with 18 knockouts. Chris Bird, what is going through this guy's mind right now? Nervous. Fights are won or lost walking down that aisle. So for Jeremy Bates, he's got to be nervous, but he got to be thinking, hey, it's a big crowd here, and I can upset Evander Holyfield. So we'll see what happens. Sal, you love the underdog, though, don't you? I love the underdog. I love the look. I like his friends. But I just think when Holyfield put his mind together to come back into this ring at 43, he's not going to embarrass himself. I think it's going to be a good challenge, though. Should we be looking at this guy in the first 30 seconds? I mean, will we be able to tell something, Chris, about him? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, Evander Holyfield done this so many times. But at 43, he hasn't done it too much. So the first 36 is going to uh, prove a lot. And see, we'll see what happens. Plus, another thing, Chris, this guy can say he fought against it. He has really nothing to lose and everything to gain, and you really don't want to fight a guy like that. Yeah, he said that Evander first became his hero back in 1984 when Evander won bronze in the Olympic Games out in Los Angeles. He, you know, he said he's been admiring him ever since, but he said he's also human. He's uh, just like me, puts his pants on one leg at a time, although they are more expensive pants. <laughs> and now it is time to unveil the real deal. Evander Holyfield. so many times he loved to uh, excite the fans and that's what they're gonna do tonight boy Sal what happened right. he was all smiles with you about an hour ago that's because you know he didn't have to fight me he's thinking this is serious look at that the champ is back in the ring I'm telling you I might change my prediction yeah why to a shorter fight yeah man Dion was right after all hey guys I can't stress this enough Evander Holyfield feels he is two fights away from a title fight but right now he is ready to square off against Jeremy Bates as for us, let's send it down ringside to the men who will call tonight's fight, Rich Murata and Sean O'Grady. Guys. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, if Evander is, in fact, two or three fights away from a championship fight, he'll need to show more than, of course, than he did in his last fight. But that was almost two years ago, and that was against Larry Donald. But what he's talking about is being completely healthy now, no shoulder injuries. He's 100%. That's what he says going into the ring tonight. My question for you, Sean, is do you consider this a dangerous fight for Evander Holyfield? Absolutely. This is the most dangerous fight for Holyfield. Here's why. Jeremy Bates. No, I don't think Jeremy's going to pull off a big surprise tonight. He could, but I don't think he will. And also, Jeremy Bates, you've got to have somebody, if you're right, Vander Holyfield, that makes you look good, that compliments your style. I think Jeremy Bates, the longer he goes, the more effect, the detrimental effect it'll have on Evander Holyfield. If I were in Evander's corner, I would say get this guy out of there as quickly, as fastly, and efficiently as you can. I would want him to go out for the KO right, right at the arm. Well, I know that Chris uh, Bird was talking about him seeing, getting some rounds in, but Holyfield told us that's not what he's about tonight. He's going to try to take care of business as soon as he can. All right, now let's take a look at the tail of the tape presented by Honda Motorcycles. And there you see the record of the uh, two fighters and certainly Holyfield's record. One for the ages, a certain Hall of Famer. The height, uh, a rare height advantage for Evander Holyfield to this extent. The weight's just about even. Both are in good shape as far as their weight is considered. And there you see, of course, the big factor, 43 years years old for Evander Holyfield, something that everybody has been talking about. And tonight, a little bit something special because this is a special event really in Dallas, which has really turned on a great buzz in this city for the fight. We're going to get a real parade of champions tonight in advance of this fight, and it's going to be presented by the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present our main event fighters, we are honored to have seven world champions joining us tonight. We'd like to present them to you at this time. In the ring, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former kickboxing world champion and two-time featherweight champion of the world from Mansfield, Texas, Troy Dorsey.
And with us here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a gentleman with a career record of 35 wins, three losses, the two-time world champion from Fort Worth, Texas, Polly Ayala. And ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from San Antonio, Texas, the two-time world champion, Jesse James Leha. And in the ring at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we have the former welterweight world champion, the Hall of Famer, Curtis Cox. And in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, a true legend of boxing from Panama, the six-time world champion, Manos de Piedra, Roberto Duran. And ladies and gentlemen, part of our broadcast, Team at ringside tonight, please welcome the former lightweight world champion, the champ himself, Sean O'Grady. And ladies and gentlemen, working in the broadcast booth upstairs, introducing the two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Chris Bird. And at ringside, ladies and gentlemen, we have a world champion in another sport. Please welcome the all-pro wide receiver from the Dallas Cowboys, the future Hall of Famer, the world champion himself, Drew Pearson. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the American Airlines Center here in Dallas, Texas, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Events in association with the Horseshoe Casino Hotel. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the Executive Director William Kuntz, Deputy Director Brian Francis. Judging at ringside for this bout, Gail Van Hoy, Don Griffin, and Neil Young, and our third man in the ring, Rafael Ramos. All right, fans, here we go with our featured bout of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Dallas, Texas, it's time for the best damn fight night period main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white trim. He joins us from Charleston, West Virginia. He weighed in at 225 and one half pounds with a record of 21 wins, 11 losses and one draw. He has 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard hitting Jeremy the Beast Bates. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, a true legend of boxing, entering the ring wearing purple trunks with red and white trim, hailing from Atlanta, Georgia, he weighed in at 220 pounds. His record, 38 wins, eight losses, and two draws, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, after nearly a two-year absence, tonight he makes his return to the ring, introducing the former Cruiserweight World Champion and the four-time heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here is boxing's true warrior, introducing Evander, the real And 
is our referee in charge, Rafael Ramos. Oh, come here. You receive the pre-fight instruction, protect yourself and obey my command, okay? Good luck. Let's do it. All right, here we go now as we get ready for this uh, return to the ring after 21 months. And let's see how Holyfield plays it. In the uh, Texas rule book, uh, no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last round. Either the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. And if we have to go to the headbutt rule, we'll go to the cards from the fourth round on. Here we go in a round one. Jeremy Bates said he would go right after Evander Holyfield. Let's see if that's the case. Holyfield a light left to jab to start things off. Evander said he wasn't looking for rounds tonight. He's looking to take care of business. He needs to make a, an impression tonight, an impression on the face of Jeremy Bates. Bates is not going to run. Bates says, I only know one way to fight. I get in there and brawl. So he's not afraid to get hit. He'll take two punches to land one of his own. You don't win fights that way. <laughs> Keep in mind also that Evander has had in some of his recent fights that were losses prior to his layoff. He did have good first rounds against opponents. In fact, one of the best was in his uh, worst defeat against James Tony. He had an outstanding first round against Tony that way. And the crowd already beginning oh, a Holyfield yeah. chant. And listen to that. I'm telling you as a fighter, when you hear something like that, if you're Holyfield, it spurs you. It, it just gives you all kinds of energy. Good right hand by Jeremy Bates. He snuck it in on Holyfield. And now Holyfield goes to the jab. The bounce in his step, Holyfield. He right. says he's fighting now without injuries. In the past, he's had to go overcome these injuries. Now he doesn't have any. Bates, I'm sure, feeling uh, some sense of nerves. He's never been in this kind of national spotlight before. Tried to sneak that right in again on Holyfield, but that one came up short. Rafael Ramos, third man in the ring. Now Holyfield trying to get a rhythm, it looks like here, Sean, with a left jab. Sure is. Look at the bounce. Look at the loose punches from Holyfield. Also trying to put the combinations together. In this opening round, so many times in that fight, you want to just get your opponent used to getting hit. Put some punches on him. Work on your speed if you're Holyfield. The first thing any, any fighter loses with age is speed. Put him out there. Don't try to knock him out at this point. Evander moving around the ring. Looks very mobile, at least here in round one. Bates trying to put the pressure on, but he's having trouble reaching Holyfield with jabs. But he is backing Holyfield up, as he promised he would do. Yeah, he's backing Holyfield up. And Holyfield, when going backwards, come up with some uppercuts, make Jeremy run into them. See how Jeremy stands with his kind of in a crouch position? You gotta get him out of that no, 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 to hit him. I got it, I got it, I got it. That's Rafael it. Ramos says, no, 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 none of this holding, none of this tying up, none of this wrestling. Holyfield back to the jab once again. It seemed like earlier when he started to jab, he started to build a rhythm off of that, unloaded the combination, and here you see it come right again. That seems to be the key for Evander to get started. Good left hook from Evander. Oh, strong right hand by Holyfield. First real hard punch of the fight. And Bates comes in and has to hang on a bit. He, oh, he felt that one. He rocks back a little bit on his legs. I'm watching those legs, and they're a little bit wobbly right now. But in the last 10 seconds of the round, and Holyfield trying to pour it on. Bates is going to need to punch back. He's not punching back. Ramos is looking at him, and they, the bell sounds. He did not stop the fight. I thought Rafael Ramos was going to jump in and stop the fight any uh, moment. I believe he was thinking about it. But this fight goes on. The bell really saved Jeremy Bates. Holyfield on the attack. What a great crescendo, too. You got this. Listen. Looking good. Looking good. <laughs> There it is. Toward the end of the round, the final seconds of that first round, look at this combination. Look how fast his punches are. Holyfield says, I'm back, my shoulders are healed, and I've got not only power, I've got speed. He's showing both of them there, the final seconds of that first round. You got this, keep it up, work that jab, let's go. All right, they want Jeremy Bates to work a jab, but his problem was he, he couldn't reach Holyfield with the jab in the first round. That was a great rally by Holyfield at the end of round number one. He definitely had Bates hurt and ready to go, and I thought that Ramos was thinking about stopping the fight. But he allowed it to continue, and Bates comes out for round two. But for Bates, he must get aggressive. Throw a lot of punches right now. Holyfield thinks he's going to come out and take you out. You've got to back 
him up. Now Vander, I'm seeing him uh, throwing combinations, which is a good sign for Evander because in recent fights he was throwing just the one punch at a time, and that's not enough. Good right hand, that hurt Bates. Ready, good punch, yeah, I got it, that's it. Bates coming forward a little bit, uh, still a little bit rocky, I think, from the last round assault from Holyfield. But remember, as I mentioned in the first round, Holyfield had great first rounds, some of his previous fights, but then wore down quickly after that. Let's see if he can keep up the attack. The right side of the face of Bates is, it is real red from those left hooks. Couldn't work with the jab tonight so far by Holyfield. As remember, go, Chris go, Bird was go, saying that when he fought Chris that's Bird, it. Holyfield on, couldn't land a jab, it. and he was landing only three jabs all night. But he is throwing it out here tonight. There it is again. Oh, there's a nice combination from Holyfield, body and head. Beautiful work with the left hand, doubled up with the hook. And a wobble. It's just a matter of time. Holyfield can end this anytime he wants. See the double left hook from Holyfield? If he wanted to end it, he'd come back with the right hand. No punch, that's it. You really see how good Holyfield is, too. He's been fighting at the upper left. Good right hand for Bates, and that drives Holyfield on the ropes. And Holyfield actually has to hold on. Bates landed his best punch of right hand. He's trying. And he tries to come over the top again with it. And now he's going to try to rough up Holyfield on the ropes. No punch, I got it. No, don't push it out, don't push it. Bates a street fighter. He's a brawler. But he's been he's in there with a guy that's been manhandled or tried to be manhandled in the past and knows how to handle it. Holyfield step back, left hook, and hurt him again. I got it, I got it. Come on. Bates is hurt once again. Bates legs betraying him a little. Nice right hand, good combination from Holyfield. Another good combination. Each one a three-punch combination. Now Evander trying to unload if he's near the end of the round. Can Bates survive the round? 15 seconds to go. Holyfield pouring it on. Ramos is watching it closely. Bates better throw something back. So he does not. The referee stops the fight. It's all over. Evander Holyfield has returned to the ring with a two-round knockout of Jeremy Bates. And believe me, he threw a lot of punches in two rounds. Well, Evander accomplished a lot. He got his punches going. He wanted to make sure that his shoulders did well after the surgery. He wanted to make sure that he was, he had the speed of a younger Holyfield. He wanted to make sure he still had the power of a Holyfield of the past. So he did accomplish a lot tonight. Of course, he had an opponent in front of him who was sure. not a mover, a guy who came to him, which is more adaptable for a Holyfield to fight than a fighter like Chris Bird or Larry Donald, one who was moving away. And, and in this case, Holyfield had a man who was there to be hit, and he hit him. And uh, Evander unloaded. Evander threw a lot of punches. Against Larry Donald, he hardly threw punches. In fact, he spent 12 rounds doing almost nothing. But in this round, in two rounds, you know, we're not going to say anything, you know, past what it was. I mean, he definitely uh, fired away, and he threw a lot of uh, he threw a lot of shots at Bates, and he was very accurate tonight. There's that right hand by Bates that landed one strong right, and as you see, Holyfield felt it and dropped him, and it, it, he went back to the ropes. But then the finish, Sean, and then it was Holyfield. And he had Bates in a shell. He just wore him down, and Bates just. Uh, had uh, enough. Rafael Ramos said that's all. But again, another look at it. Look at the combinations from Holyfield. The uppercut working well. The right cross working well. He's still firing on his punches. Still pretty sharp. He's 43 year old, years old. Look at him. He looks pretty good. Pretty strong still. And he's in there with Jeremy Bates. But this is a testing fight, a probing fight, just to see where he stands and to put him back into the picture. Rafael Ramos says that's all. Well, it's one that he wanted to be able to assess himself at at the end of the fight, and so it'll be interesting to see what he has to say tonight, and I'm sure we'll all be assessing as the fans around the nation will be assessing Evander Holyfield's performance this evening, and I'm sure those in the heavyweight division will be assessing Evander Holyfield's uh, performance this evening as well. So Evander returns on a winning note. He's got his first victory in more than three years as he takes out Jeremy Bates in two.
Welcome back to Big D and the American Airlines Center. And I'll tell you, Dallas has been a big buzz over this uh, card tonight. And you see the crowd, which is about 10,000 here tonight. Gate for this one said to be around 600,000 or more as a result of a lot of ticket buys and Evander Holyfield returned to the ring in a successful, victorious manner here tonight. He landed some big shots right away in the first round. Evander showing the ability to put punches together once again, which is something he hasn't done in recent fights. He threw a lot of punches. And he was much more active, obviously, against Jeremy Bates. There at the end of the first round, he almost finished Bates off. In the second round, he hurt Bates. Again, it was near the end of the round. The round was being counted down, final seconds of the round. He got Bates in trouble here, and he just wasn't going to let up. Evander just uh, was throwing body and head punches, throwing with both hands. Remember, he said he's... Uh, Injury free, he's healthy, he's feeling good in the gym, and that was it. Jeremy Bates, very courageous, never did go down, but the fight was called by Rafael Ramos at that point. And the winner, Evander Holyfield, but we will get the official particulars and specifics now from the one and only Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 56 seconds in round number two. A referee in charge, Rafael Ramos, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, and he is back. Ladies and gentlemen, Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Evander Holyfield running his record now to 39, 8, and 2, and he picks up the 26th knockout of his career. Now let's go up into the ring with Sean O'Grady with the victorious Evander Holyfield. Sean? Thanks, Rich. Evander, you have so many people that care about you and that love you. Look at these people here in Dallas. I know you're appreciative of that. Of that. What is that? First of all, how are the injuries? Well, you know, I overcame the injuries and stuff, and now. So glad to get an opportunity to get back in the ring and uh, show the people that, you know, I, I wasn't uh, boxing bad because I was old. It was just because the injuries I had. Yeah. You're the real deal is back. How did you feel tonight? Aside from the injuries, sharp, crisp, how did you feel? Well, I, I, I felt better. Um, I was able to do the things that I ain't been able to do in about five years. I, I was able to slip punches. I was able to use my foot speed. I was able to go in and out. But when I had to injure, I wasn't able to do that, so I was a standing target. It's a different Evander Holyfield. This young man, Jeremy Bates, he hit you with a good shot there in that second round, I believe. Did he hurt you? Well, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't get hurt. I, I saw the shot, and, and it, it, got, you know, it got in, you know, and I was glad that I was able to handle it. Well, help me to assess your performance tonight. We're going to take a look at some of the action, and just kind of, if you will, just tell me what you were thinking, what you were seeing. Well, well you know, right here, I'm... I didn't really have my feet under me, and I was, I actually wanted to hit him with a crisp shot, but I realized if I don't stay on him, he, he was going to recover, and it was going to just make it a little bit more harder. He was going to come back. I know as a fighter, you are always learning, trying to improve. Anything you see tonight that you need to work on? I know you only have two rounds, but. Well, of course, I, you know, you know that, like, that position there, if I was able to uh, put my feet under me and, and throw a little bit more crisp a shot and use my leg, you know, it, it wouldn't have sucked that many shots. Evander, where do you go from here? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, try to fight a top rank, top 10 fighter. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just doing good in practice, that I would be able to come into a fight and be able to do good. So I'm looking forward to a top 10 fighter. Well, I think you, look, you looked good tonight. You looked sharp. Do you think you turned back the clock? No, well, I don't think the clock ever turned. It's just the fact that I was injured, and um, that caused me uh, to uh, fight the fight that I fought. That, like, that sounds like a, a guy in my decade, the 40-year-old guys. That sounds like us. The clock never turned back. What, uh, what, what did this fight do for you? I, I, I don't think it's so much what it did for me as what it did for p other people. You know, I'm trying to let them know age is nothing but a number. You know, if you're willing to pay the price that's necessary, then you know, and give God the glory. You know, my whole thing, I just thank God for giving me an opportunity to display my talent before the people, let them know that it's not about the age. Speaking of payday now, Evander, you're the, you're the money man here, as we're joined by Jeremy Bates. You're the money man in the heavyweight division. What does that mean in this class? Well, hopefully, uh, this, if anyone in the heavyweight champion of the world want to make some money, then they have to fight a credible opponent, and I'm, I'm just one of them. Yeah. 
Well, this young man here, Jeremy Bates, I know that you've had a hero here and an idol in, in uh, Evander Holyfield. And what an honor it is to get hit by Evander Holyfield. Tell me how that feels. Absolutely. It didn't feel like such an honor a few minutes ago. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. And, um, you know, uh, there's one thing I can do. I can hit. And I caught Evander dead on the chin with the right hand. And a lot of, you know, guys, uh, make-believe guys would have gone down. And, he was right there, you know. And, uh, yeah, and we're going to take a look at that. Tell me what you were thinking when you cracked him. Here's a look at it. Tell me what was going through your mind when you nailed him. I thought, oh, my God, I just caught Evander Holyfield. You know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> you, uh, like I said, I may have struck out, but I struck out swinging. And I seen it. I remembered. I was there. And I thought, oh. But, uh, you know, I came. I came with it all today, you know, and there was uh, no ifs. You know, I had time to get ready. Uh, a lot of these top 10 guys that I fought before give me a week, and Evander give me eight weeks. He's got a lot of class, and he's a true champion. Oh, yeah, very I wish classy. Him the best. You're right, very classy. That's it. I know Dallas loves him. Everybody loves him. Evander Holyfield, he gets a victory. He's back. He's looking for a championship fight, Rich.